Hello, Algebra 2. How are you doing? Hopefully well. It's section 1.1. We're going to first talk about intervals before we get into domain range and end behavior. So I want to cover some just the, today is just going to be about like definitions, understanding how we can get to these things here. Once we build those uh, foundation building blocks, then we can move on. So today is going to be very simple. Some of it might be review. We'll see. So if you want to get a title, you got a nice little dog. Look at that cute dog. Oh my gosh. Let's get started. So here's my like introduction slide. This is our notes. Um, learning target is written right here. I highly encourage you to get that down so that you know exactly what we're talking about today. So today, and we're also, again, we're going to continue these notes a second day. All right. So this notes, I can relate the domain range and end behavior of a function to its graph. You may want to pause me if you're going to write this down. So hit pause and then come back to it. And then this bottom part here, I have a success criteria. So you know you're going to be successful with this chapter when you can discover uh, that when real world phenomena are modeled by functions, there are constraints on the domain range and function of the model, or excuse me, uh, on the domain and range of the function model. Again, we're going to get to most of this later. I'm really concerned that you get the learning target down. Um, and then the second success criteria is examine end behavior functions modeling real world situations. Again, we'll get to the rest of this. Pause if you need to. So, like I said, today we are going to talk about intervals. Let's define what an interval is. Usually if I have something in blue font, that means I highly encourage you write it down. So what an interval is, it's a part of a number line that does not have any breaks. So I like to think about it as a set of numbers. I'm just going to draw a literal number line and we can talk about it. So, I mean, these are things you've been doing since what, sixth grade? Here's zero, one, two, three, and on and on. Here's negative one, negative two, negative three. So an example of an interval might be, let me get my red marker, could be all the numbers between negative two and one. That's an example of an interval, right? It's a set of numbers. It's part of a number line. There's no breaks in here. But let's say I've got an, an interval that looks like this. So between negative two and negative one and between two and on forever. Obviously, this, we're not gonna consider this an interval because we have that break here, all right? Again, a set of numbers. So this set between negative two and negative one is negative one and a half in that set. Yes, it is. It is negative 1.89. Yep, it's in that set, right? So that's an interval, okay. Now we're going to talk about some different types of intervals that we are going to come across. You could have a finite interval and you could have an infinite interval. What are the difference? Uh, here, in a finite interval, you have two endpoints. All right, that's kind of what I was drawing on the last slide. You've got an endpoint here, you've got an endpoint here. All of your numbers in that set are contained between negative two and five in this example, all right? So finite, you're kind of putting a stop to this interval and you're saying you're gonna have two endpoints, all right? On the other hand, infinite intervals, unbounded at one or both ends. So notice the difference over here, we only have one endpoint at two and this arrow, this section of my number line continues forever in this direction, all right? So it's bounded at one end. Again, that is our, uh, we've got one endpoint, and then the other side, there's no end to that guy. So five's in this set, right? In this interval, five is in that interval. Six is in the interval. 10 is in the interval. 10 million is in the interval. 10 million and one is in the interval. Would infinity be in that interval? Yes, it would. Okay. Again, you may need to pause and get this down in your notes. Uh, also, I want you to notice that there was different types of endpoints on that last slide. So some endpoints may be closed and some endpoints may be open. 
all right? The difference between these kind of goes back to like eighth grade, whenever you learned that, all right? So a closed circle means you include that end point, you include that number in your set. So here, I have an interval between zero and three. Since zero is a closed endpoint, I'm going to include zero in that interval, in that set. On the other hand, open circles, you do not include that point in your set. So here in my interval, since I have an open circle on three, I am not going to include three in my set of numbers here. So, is zero in that interval? Yes, it is, it's got that closed dot. Is negative two in that interval? No, obviously not. Is one and a half in that interval? Yeah, it's about right there. Is three in this interval? No, it's not. Okay. And then again, this is kind of, you could write this as an inequality, right? We're including zero in this interval. Again, we're gonna get to inequalities here in just a minute. But we could say that X, whatever number you wanna think about being in your interval, all right? X, it's got to be greater than, or it could be equal to zero, but it has to be strictly less than three. Again, there's no line underneath here that says that it could be equal to three because we have that open circle on three. All right, we're rocking and rolling. So, intervals. We're going to write them a couple different, a couple different ways now that you know what they are. So, we're going to write them as a number line. Check, we've already seen examples of that. We're gonna write them as inequalities, what we just saw on the last slide. And then the two newer ones are set notation and interval notation. My favorite, I like interval notation, so I use that quite frequently. All right, we're gonna go through each one of these. Here's an example of a number line. You've got an interval. This is, is it finite or infinite? Well. I have one endpoint, and you see that that endpoint is an open circle. So there's no other endpoint, so it has to be an infinite interval, all right? So it's got one endpoint, it continues on forever in this direction, forever. So there's our number line. I mean, there's nothing really much. You could get this a copy down in your notes, but there's nothing I'm going to say other than it's a picture. Okay. But your inequality, again, this is nothing new. You could write this as an inequality. So looking at this number line, I could say, well, x, whatever number that is in my interval, it's got to be less than 5, right? So x is less than 5. Again, it's not less than or equal to because that's an open circle. So we can just write that inequality. Please let me know if you have any questions later, all right? So that's how you would just write an inequality from a number line. Set notation is a little bit different. I'm still using the same number line here, all right? Set notation uses these fancy curly brackets and I have them written up here. So with set notation, again, all of these are just different ways that you can write intervals. So here I'm gonna start with this curly bracket and I'm just gonna start dissecting that here. So this reads, the set of, okay, the set of all x, so any x that might be in a set, all right? I'm just talking about like any number. This vertical line here is kind of special. It means such that. And I'll even include that right here, all right? So the vertical line in set notation means such that. And you see that in the sentence right here, such that, okay? So it's the set of, I've got this set notation curly brackets, the set of real numbers or just any X such that, there's our vertical line, the set of any X such that X is less than five. And that is our interval from the previous slide. So set notation, and writing um, inequalities are very similar because I can just say a set of x such that and then drop in your interval, or excuse me, your inequality. So x such that x is less than five. And then close that set notation with another uh, curly bracket there.
So that's set notation. Okay. And we're, we're going to have more examples of these as we go. All right. So if you need to pause, The other one is a little more tricky. It's interval notation, all right? So here's my number line, and I know that I've got five as an end point, but is there an end point this way? I mean, not really, because negative six isn't the end point. This number line can keep going on. It could be negative seven, negative eight. Again, this arrow is going to continue in that direction forever. So if we keep walking that way forever, we're gonna see all these negative numbers. Negative seven, negative eight, negative nine, negative 10, negative a billion, negative a billion 50. I mean, eventually, if we walk far enough, are we gonna to get to negative infinity? Yeah, so you can think about it as, well, all the way down here, there's negative infinity, all right? So we can even think about that as being our end point. All right, so we've got one endpoint of five, and it's going on forever to negative infinity. So how would we write this with interval notation? Interval notation takes some sort of endpoint, comma, endpoint, and then some sort of bracket here, and I'll go through the types of brackets, all right? So right here, these ones, these are called hard brackets. And you would use these if you are including the endpoint in your set. Kind of like the difference between greater than or greater than or equal to. Less than or less than or equal to. So I'm going to say these are called hard brackets and we use them when we include Use them when you include points in your set. I'm going to get rid of this here because it's getting in the way. The other type are called, well, what's the opposite of hard brackets? It's going to be softer brackets. So again, these are hard brackets because they look like this, all right? The softer brackets are just regular parentheses. All right, so these are soft brackets. And we use them when we are not including a point in our set. Okay, so this one is not including point. And this will all make more sense, all right? So just bear with me, you're doing good so far. So, and then the other part here, we could have a positive infinity or we could have a negative infinity. That's what I was talking about earlier that with this arrow, keep extending this direction, eventually there's going to be a negative infinity, okay? So, this is how you write interval notation. Use your endpoints. I've got an endpoint of negative infinity, and I'm going to write that one first. We like to start with our smaller number. Obviously, negative infinity is a lot going to be smaller than a positive 5. So I've got negative infinity, comma, Five. Those are like my two endpoints with this interval. Now I have to decide if I'm going to use hard or soft brackets. So on this five, am I going to use a hard or soft bracket? Well, am I including five in my interval? It is an open circle, so I'm not including five in my interval. I'm going to use soft brackets. Now we have to think, are we including negative infinity in our interval? And this is where it gets a little abstract. You're going to have to think out of the box. I mean, is negative infinity, I mean, it's, it's a number. It's more of a concept. We can't count to infinity. We can't count to negative infinity. But I mean, like, it's a thing, right? So since it is not a hard endpoint, right, it's not something that I can point to. It's just a concept that we're thinking about. You know, it could go off into negative infinity. We're just going to use soft brackets when we're talking about infinities. So I'm going to put another soft bracket on the negative infinity. Okay, you may want to pause and get that all down. I really hope that writing shows up. <laughs>
and let's go over some examples. So, uh, give me a second. Okay, and this is the same kind of thing. If we were looking at a finite interval, here this is a finite interval because it has two endpoints. I have an open endpoint at three, and I have a closed endpoint at zero. So my endpoints of zero and three, again, zero is first because it's a smaller number. Am I including zero in my interval? Yes, I am, because it has a closed circle on that endpoint. So since I'm including it in my set, I use hard brackets. So I've got a hard bracket on the zero, comma, three, my other endpoint. Now, am I including three in my interval? No, I'm not because it's an open circle. So that's where we come up with the softer bracket. So you can use, you can use both hard and soft brackets in your interval notation. Okay. So practice intervals, here we go. So you've got this number line and I'm just gonna give most of them out as number lines. Let's see if we can write this as an inequality, as set notation and as an interval notation. So here, let's think about it. Do we have an infinite or a finite interval? I've got one endpoint and I've got an arrow that goes on. We're gonna assume it goes on forever. So this would be a infinite interval. So what are written as a number line? So let's write it as an inequality. If we were to pick any number x out of this set, out of this interval, well, we've got this kind of condition here. x has to be, is it gonna be greater than or less than zero? It's gotta be less than zero. So for my inequality, I can write x less than zero. Since it is a closed dot, I can also include zero in this interval, in this set of numbers. So I'm gonna say that it could be less than or equal to zero. So that's your inequality notation. Set notation. Set notation, we're bringing those curly brackets. So I'm starting it with a curly bracket and we're gonna say, any x in the real numbers, right? I mean, all of these numbers, negative two and a half, negative four, these are all real numbers. So any x such that, what's that condition that we have for this interval? We know that x has to be less than or equal to zero. So you could just take your inequality, drop it down here in your set notation and say, the set of x such that x is less than or equal to zero, put a final squiggly bracket to close your set notation. What about interval notation? Okay. What kind of endpoints do I have here? I have an endpoint of zero. And again, this thing is going forever in that direction. So I could say I have an endpoint of, eventually it's going to be negative infinity, right? So I'm gonna start this with negative infinity, comma, zero. Here's my interval notation. We're talking about infinities. This isn't like a real endpoint, right? Because it's going on forever. So we're just gonna use that soft bracket when we're talking about infinities. Soft bracket on the negative infinity. And then the zero, are we including that in our set? Yeah, we are, because it's a closed circle, right? We even said that x could be equal to zero. So since we're including this endpoint of zero, I'm going to use a hard bracket. There you go, I'll fix that a little bit. That's a little nicer. <laughs> There's your interval notation. Okay. Does that look like we did it all right? Yes, there's your answer. Okay, let's go on a couple more. I'm gonna try and keep this at 25 minutes. So here's another one. We have a finite interval because we have two endpoints. Again, you may wanna pause and get some of this written down in your notes. Maybe sketch a, sketch a little number line here. So I have two endpoints. We got it written as a number line, check. How about we do this as an inequality? Again, this shouldn't be anything too new. So as an inequality, well, again, I usually, we just like to use X as a variable. X could be any number in the set, right? We just have to contain it between negative two and two, all right? 
So x, any number in here, it's got to be greater than negative 2. But it has to be less than 2. Do we need to add anything like greater than or equal to, less than or equal to here? Well, definitely on this one because it's a closed circle. X has to be less than 2, but it could be equal to 2. So I'm going to add that line there, and that is our inequality. How about our set notation? The set of any x such that, and then just plop down your inequality here. It's the set of any x such that x is greater than negative 2, but less than or equal to 2. Again, that's your condition on which x can be, right? So if I said, well, what if x is 10? Then you can look here. Well, is 10 greater than negative 2? Yeah, but it's not less than or equal to 2. So x equals 10, not in that set. Okay. And then interval notation. Again, I like this one. We've got two endpoints. And here, there's no infinities, right? Because it's between negative 2 and 2. Those are very specific endpoints. So I'm going to use negative 2, comma, 2. Now let's look at what kind of endpoints we have, because we have to decide if we're going to use hard or soft brackets. Here, I'm going to use a soft bracket on negative 2. And here, since it's a closed circle, I'm going to use a hard bracket on 2. Okay, you may need to pause if you need to. All right, let's move on. This one's kind of a challenge. I like this one. So we've got this number line, and we've got arrows on either side of my number line here. So you keep moving this way. Eventually, you're going to get to negative infinity, right? But we also have an arrow over here. So if we keep moving this way, this is really silly to do just by myself in the classroom. <laughs> if you keep moving this way, eventually you're going to get to a positive infinity. So there's no real endpoints here, but we know it could be, I mean, could it be any number? Could it be negative a billion and one? Yeah, it could be. Could it be a positive 512,000? Yeah, right? So here, our number line, we've already got that down. Our inequality, I... I'm just going to jump down to interval notation. I'm not too worried about these two right now. This is just an example to get your idea in the thinking processes of infinities. So my interval notation, I mean, I could have a negative infinity. Our other endpoint, I mean, again, we're going off to a positive infinity this way. What are my brackets on this? not hard brackets, so we're going to use soft brackets. So here we have negative infinity to positive infinity. That's literally like all the numbers. Every number. Any number. As long as it's a real number, then it would be included in this set. So again, we could just call this all real numbers. That's how you would write it as set notation. Uh, x such that x is a real number. Again, 4.5 is a real number, it'd be in that set, right? And then there's this fancy way to write real numbers where you have this kind of script R. That's another way you could say all real numbers. And then this was the way we just talked about using those. I mean, it's kind of weird to think about positive and negative infinity, but we have a way to represent that with our interval notation. Okay, I think that was the last one I have. Okay, um, on the PowerPoint, I will also give this, which is kind of just like a little cheat sheet, all right? You've got interval notation, you've got set notation, how it would look like as a graph or a number line, and then the type of endpoint you have. Notice how all of these only include um, infinite, right? We talked about also finite intervals where you have two distinct endpoints. Okay, and that's it. So I'm clocking in at about 25 minutes, so I'm going to give you the first 35 minutes of class if you need to pause, write things down, 
and then come to me 35 minutes after class, go to Google Meets, join me at Blackman 107. We will talk more about this. I will have more examples. Have a great day, guys. See you soon. See you soon, right here.